Yo, what's up guys? My name is Severman and welcome back to another video on my channel. So usually I always create like FLPs, templates, remakes or whatever and then I show you how I made those or I show you how I made my own tracks. But for today's video I thought I will make a progressive house breakdown from scratch together with you guys. So um, yeah, I'm basically going to show you the whole process like how I started a progressive house break and kind of how everything comes together. I think that's really interesting. So by the way, we've now also announced the winners of the remix competition for my song Made It. So I've made a separate post here on YouTube and I also yeah, announced them on Instagram. But if you've missed out on that post, um, just check out the link in the description. Then you can yeah, check out the winners. But yeah, let's start with the video. Let's get right into FL Studio. Let's go. So I usually start with a piano. So I always use true pianos. And yeah, for the break, what's really important is the chords because yeah, we don't have a melody really yet. Because like in progress files, obviously you have the vocals in the break, just with some chords underneath those. And then in the drop you have like the melody spot on. But yeah, for the breaks, what's really important is the chords, they really need to be nailed. And actually for this video, I got a MIDI chord pack sent by a company called Unison. And this MIDI chord pack contains over 1.2k chord files, which is like crazy. And I've, yeah, I've checked out that pack and it got a lot of really cool chords. And I think this is a really cool way to, you know, just, just get right into that mood, get that inspiration for, for the song that you need when you want to create something new. So um, let's just check out the pack real quick. So as you can see, they have lots of like folders in here with the different keys and stuff. And for progressive house, for the emotional progressive house, what usually works, works really well is the key D major. So let's just pick that one. Then here we have some different types of chords in here. Let's just go with the progressions. Uh, this one. Let's check out some, some major progressions. There we go. You already have a really cool chord progression which you can use to build your track around. And let's maybe let's maybe pick two or three other ones, maybe just check them out real quick. It's also cool. I think this is really cool. I really like this one. It's not too like complicated or or whatever. Like it's it's really spot on. It's really simple and kind of sounds very familiar I would say which is always good for chords because for chords you don't want to get too experimental by the way if you want to get this pack as well make sure to buy it using the link in the description because this way you'll get 60% off so definitely don't miss out on that so yeah let's just let's just keep these chords and let's create a cool break around these chords and then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna drag in the um, vocal of my song made it just to have like a reference Could you found somebody to And there you go, we have already a really cool vibe. And I think what could work really well on top of this one is if we just pick a second one. Let me put some reverb on this one to really kind of push it into to the background. Also, you can get a really kind of relaxed vibe um, in the break with the chords is to lower the velocity. And what you can also do to make that piano more organic, like it's played by you know a real human, is to, to play around with these things right here. For instance, I think maybe this drum could work well. So as you can see, this one kind of shifts the note a bit. And if you just play around with these knobs, you can really dial in how you, how you want it to be. You wouldn't want it to be like too crazy because then it sounds totally off, but just like a tiny bit. Okay, 
Okay, so now we have a reverb and a filter on, on like the ARP piano. And then we have a sound collage to just compress the chord piano a bit and to kind of make it just louder, to be honest. And then we have also the low pass filter on here. Then you can, you know, play around with, with the cut up. Um, we can like, can do an automation clip for this guy. So let's do this real quick. And one trick that I do a lot is that I link certain like knobs that I want to automate to, to the same automation clip if I, I were to create the same automation for another knob. So for instance, I want to do the, the same automation on, on the cutoff knob for the core piano. So for that, you can just right click this one and then link to controller. Then you basically just need to select the right um, automation clip for this one. So right now we obviously only have one, but if you have like already um, a bunch of automation clips, it will show all of those. And then you just need to select the right one. So yeah, also make sure that you disable the remove conflicts uh, knob, because if you don't disable this one, it will basically unlink um, the other one again with like for the other piano. So um, yeah, now we have some, some nice automation with the filter for both pianos. All right, cool. Now let's try to find some ambient sounds that we can put on the background. All right, so I found these two ambient sounds, which are from the musical Lost Volume 2. And then I found also this guitar also from the same pack. So I think next up, let's maybe try to find a nice pad for, for the chords that we have. All right, so for this one, I found this ambient pad, which is from the single layer pads from the, from the Nexus expansion. Then, yeah, on this one, I also have the filter with the same automation clip. And then I also have like a gated um, gross speed preset on this one to kind of add more rhythm to this one. It just kind of creates this um, stutter effect. Yeah, it just creates some nice movement to this one because the other ones are just like sustained, all of the sounds that we have. And then I also already got some EQing on this one. Um, I just took out the lows and then I boosted the higher mids and highs a bit to kind of give it some more air kind of. So um, yeah, let's also try to find some like FX sounds, like some, some sweeps and stuff to really also add something to the high end to, to the break. Alright, so I think this first break half already sounds pretty decent. Like we could still add some more sounds to, to this part maybe to kind of add some, some movement already to the track and um, also some more automation. But I think next I'm gonna continue with sort of the next 8 to 16 bars. And with those I think, you know what, let me just first of all copy and paste all of the stuff that we already have here. And I think what I'm going to do first now at this part is that I'm going to um, implement a nice bass line because if you start a break without a bass line and then later on you add one in, it really already creates a lot of um, like depth. So um, yeah, what, what usually works really well um, in like a progressive break is some sort of Reese bass. And for that, I'm just going to open up a spire and like these type of sounds are really easy to um, 
yeah, actually create. So let me just open up um, the init preset real quick. So first of all, let's grab the base notes from our chord progression and let's yeah, paste these into our, our spire piano roll thing. So now this is the, yeah, the bass progression. So that it still sounds super boring now. So first of all, let me um, increase the voices. Already sounds more interesting. Now let me also turn up the, the width or the white knob. All right, now let's do some EQing on this one, or basically just, let's just put a filter on this one to get rid of the highs. There you go, we have a really nice Reese bass. I think I'm also gonna add some some drums now to this part to really kind of create um, a nice flow in the break to really push the track and so yeah, just create tension and you know adding a kick drum or shake loops, claps or whatever really helped to do so. So let's try to find some some nice um, drums. All right, so now I've added a kick drum with a low pass filter and I also increased this out knob to kind of get rid of a bit of the, the long tail that it has. Then I added a stadium clap loop, a basic shake loop that you find in like every progressive file song. And then we also got like one more FX um, down lifter type of sound. All right, cool, so next up, I think I'm gonna add another um, sound for the chords, maybe another one that is also gated to kind of add something new to it and to also have to create more tension. I think this one sounds really nice and I've also gated up the chords now. So let's try to implement this one into uh, the rest of the sounds that we have. So I think I'm also gonna put some EQing now on the new chord layer to get rid of the chords out of the bass a bit because we already have quite a few elements that provide lower mids and bass. So I think with this one, I'm also gonna automate the cutoff knob because I wanna like open up the, the filter of this one. And then like when we're at the drop or like during the build up, I wanna like open it up completely so that it's yeah fully open when, when a track comes to the drop basically. So I think the main sounds that are now still missing are the drums for the build up, like some snares, you know, like snare loops, um, some uplifters, and then what you could do is also um, introduce the leads from, from the drop or maybe the also the chords from the drop or 
or also the bass line, you could do that as well. Um, so let me try to find a nice snare that we can add right here and also some, some cool uplifters. So this one is like a sample that I exported from one of my um, older tracks. Let's try to mix this one with the kick. Then I also have found this uplifter right here, but I'm also gonna like add some, some more uplifters. Let's also like um, kind of speed up the, the key drum a bit like we have with the snares. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna automate the volume of the kick drum as well as the volume of the, the bass line, I think. And then I wanna have it like completely out when the drop would hit. Yeah, I think it's just missing maybe some more uplifters and leads that we could introduce now. But I'm, I'm gonna leave out the leads and I'm just gonna try to find two, three more uplifters real quick. Maybe also one more downlifter. Maybe this one. Yeah, this one sounds cool as well. I think in the build up right now, we're still having too much in there. And I think it's the, the piano right here. So one more thing that I'm gonna do is that I'm also gonna automate the volume for, for the piano. And this just creates some more, you know, um, impact when the drop hits because right before the drop, there's like elements fading out. So um, yeah, this, this also really helps always. All right, I think there we got it, it's pretty dope. So again, one thing that I would still add in here is, or at least one thing are, are the leads from the drop, but we don't have any drop leads now and would be kind of pointless now to start creating leads. But um, without talking too much, let's just check out the entire result now again. So let's go. All right, that's it. So I think it actually turned out really good. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna create a download link for this one. So if you wanna download this one, you can just grab it for free. I think that's always um, yeah something cool when you get free stuff like this. So obviously you could still go in, be more precise with the EQing, add some more you know um, processing like compression or whatever, some some stair widening. But I think this gives a really um, cool idea of what you generally need for a progressive force break. Okay, I just noticed the camera is um, turned off. So let me just continue talking with the B camera. So um, yeah, that's it with the video. Um, if you wanna download this one, check out the second link in the description. And um, yeah, I hope you liked this one. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you did so. Comment with your feedback, subscribe if you haven't, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.